what's up everybody we are back at it again we had a very eventful weekend at uh Sayre, jasper as well um not a whole lot to talk about at um jasper on saturday i mean on friday night um but Sayre was very very um interactive there was a lot of a lot of uh things that went on uh, big race the trot dog was a was a better race than i thought it was going to be but it really it wasn't it wasn't it was good for the fans not really good for the drivers um we had some trolling going on we uh some sponsorships got swapped out um i thought i thought it was it was pretty funny to be uh looking at it from my standpoint i think it's pretty funny um what at some point there were some people said some things to me i think even more over social media and then people mentioning that that was trying to i you know you either got to look at it like this you got to look at it like you talk so they talk that's okay and, and it's not anybody that's in the class it's people that are fans that are that are uh, fans of other people that are just taking shots at you well look i um i can take it it's not that big a deal um so i like not to be offended on it i like to look at it as a joke and um it's really really good for the entertainment purposes um <clears throat> so for what i'm trying to do with this um youtube channel i'm gonna lay that out there a little bit for you guys as you subscribe what i want to do is give back to short track racing and not take away from it and so what I'll be expecting is my check back from the sponsorship that I don't have anymore, and I'm going to be giving that away to somebody else. So as soon as I get that check back from the 38 car, I'll be giving it out to somebody else, uh, probably the 10 because he can win. Um, <clears throat> so what I was thinking was that through all of this, it kind of got me thinking, what can I do to help short track racing? And what I'm gonna do is next year, I'm gonna have a driver in one of my cars. And it's probably gonna be somebody that you would not expect me to ever pick to put in one of my pony cars. And I'm gonna let them drive the car that they used to own. And it ain't TJ, but it is that car. And I'm going to let that car, if that man wants to, I'm going to let him drive it and let him uh, run that car because I'm probably not going to race next year in that in that class. Um, my, my late model will probably be built by then since I'm so good. I'm going to move up to late model and get away from these bunch of rookies in the pony stock. And, um, <clears throat> you know, just, just hang out there with the big dogs where I belong, you know. Um, it's just who I am, right? that's a joke it's all that's all a joke i've i've got knocked on a little bit this week uh, somebody said something like we ran out of money so we couldn't keep our name on the car that's hilarious um that that's kind of what um taking shooting shots mentioning my wife and stuff like that i could care less as long as you don't as long as you don't um put a threat towards my family all the talkings for entertainment purposes is what i'm going to go with and um that's that's how i like to look at it i think it's hilarious um very entertaining very slick move probably one of the best trolls i've seen wish it was me on the giving end of that troll that's a really good one actually um johnston rv service is now sponsoring a pony car and they don't even know who's driving it so that's that's probably one of the best things i have seen i wasn't going to talk about it because i didn't want to give uh i didn't want to give any attention to it but to me it's 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 probably one of the most comical things that that has happened and it's a really good shot back at last week's video and i love it um um it's very funny let's move on now to get out of the politics of what's going on at the racetrack and into some more uh i feel like on track incidents that created more politics which would be starting out in the buzz class i've got videos of of what went on in the buzz class um not a lot of not a lot of that stuff surfaced the videos probably wasn't that great but i, I will put them out there um probably on facebook and you guys let me know what you think about them on there there's some drama there there's some there's some drama there and i think a lot of it's a grudge i think i think a lot of it comes from 
a small hatred of a certain group of people. And now, do they make themselves easy to love? Probably not. You know, looking at it from your, from, from both sides, standpoints of things, uh, I like Chris Hill, I like Tyler Rogers, both people that were in the cars. Um, as people, I talked to both of you guys, so, so I won't talk about either one of you in the sense, all I can talk about is what's going on on the track and how it looks. Uh, 13 drives off through the corner, Somebody said that 71 block down the back straight away. I have no idea because I didn't see that part because if y'all know where I stand and take my video points from All I get to see is what's happened in that corner and when they rolled through the corner the 13 was shoving the 71 shoved him up the track the 71 Saves it comes down the track 13 goes to pass him on the outside and 71 spins him out if I'm not mistaken, that's exactly what my video shows and you guys, but here's those those little small clips, guys, that I put on there. They're this, they're this much of what happens. It could be weeks or months or, or years worth of things that happen that create a drama that all gets shown that one little bit and makes one person look worse than the other person. In this case, both cars made contact with the other car um, so you get to see a little bit of both sides of it, but these videos I put out there are not towards anyone, but they're for entertainment, people getting to see things that happen. That's what it's about. Um, in that incident, the 71 is getting shoved off in the corner like that, you know, like a passing, uh, if, if you want to call it a bump and run to me it really wasn't a bump and run it was but there has been intensity in that race um with a different couple of groups and and i can see the frustration from chris hill's standpoint of trying to get up there and win races and he's been having confrontation with a couple of different cars that's kept him out of victory lane on a couple of different occasions but then we go into he got black flagged and rides around the racetrack waving at everybody uh a gentleman I don't I do know his name but I'm not gonna say it goes out on the track and is talking to Chris and then gets escorted out all that stuff I'm not gonna post a lot of stuff about people outside of the cars that's not what it's if you're on that track you're entertaining people what happens off the racetrack and in there I'm not gonna try to put a lot of that stuff out there because I don't know what your jobs are get you in trouble with your employer and stuff like that's not the idea for me um, but you guys understanding that going on that racetrack you're putting yourself in danger and the track's going to have to take precautions and kick you out and all that i think that if you're out there on that racetrack um i've i myself personally have got wild in a race car um under caution and under green and not in a long time i haven't and i'm trying not to get into anything that would make me want to do it um earlier in this year i got spun out and i, I you know, I show the displeasure by a dart at somebody, but I'm really trying not to use my car as a weapon. And not because I don't want to tear them up, but because it's, it, it makes you look some type of way, guys. It does. But it's not, it's most of it's youth, youthfulness in it. And then sometimes you're just completely fed up. I can't talk about either side of it because I've been on both sides. I've been on the side where I was young and ignorant to the situation and didn't realize that i still had a chance i could have got back out there and then i've been on the side where i've been full grown and i have tore stuff up just because i didn't like the person or or i didn't like how they raced me before and i didn't like what happened in that moment i was going to show them my displeasure with zero thoughts about it that didn't happen in the buzz race what's even more dangerous though is when you run out on the track when the cars are still moving it's very very dangerous is what it is i mean you know what you're doing most of the time sometimes you don't you get you get mad and and you don't really you don't think about it realistically but if you're sitting back at home now you're probably thinking man i probably shouldn't have ran out and did that or you're thinking hey that's my kid or that's so and so that you're messing with and i'm not gonna have it so i do believe that it is the part of the season where people are worried about their point standing and people are worried about getting that race one that they hadn't got to win all year and there's frustration has mounted year uh all throughout the year week in and week out and now you're in that zone where it's almost over so if i'd say everybody sit back this week in your shop and think about 
the year is almost over and things that you haven't done you're not going to get them accomplished if you do something crazy and get kicked out <clears throat> you know um really good racing though i feel like in that buzz class there's a lot of good drivers that are going to move up probably or if they stay in there they're going to be hard to beat um you look at the 20 car very very fast ran a really good race deserved the win i would like to see the 71 and 13 not have the conflict and be able to try to get up there and run with him um i don't i don't think they had anything for him necessarily 13 might have would have 71 it just depends I, I didn't get to see his car run that great but really good race entertaining you know if anything it was very entertaining uh like both groups of people in the uh, i like tyler rogers i can't say i like both groups of people some of the people that hang out with tyler rogers i, I don't like some of the people i do um that's just me being honest with you not that i don't like you as a person i don't like how you act as, at the racetrack but i do like tyler rogers and the seven you know a few people that hang out with him and then the 13 i like all those guys i like marty and andy and, and chris so not going to talk about your you guys that much because well i just sit here and talk about you for like seven minutes but very entertaining you guys go dig for a win get get the you know try to get the politics out of it i know how it is i you get caught up in the middle of it and that's all you think about and you, you get a you get discouraged with it after a while just go try to win races and, and finish the season strong y'all have got really good cars and you're both really good drivers try to get each other out of your heads um which will be harder to do now than before move on then you got the mod lights i'll say it again um what jeremy williams is doing in the five car if you watch that race um he's going to win a mod light race if he stays in it Do, doing a pretty good job in there hadn't always been a fan of jeremy and his driving and his um some you know but i have because he drives rough but realistically if you look back at all the classes he's in he's driving to win he's not driving to make friends and that's just you know that's what a lot of the greats do a uh, very talented driver and then you go into the pure street race which was the first leg i would say of the 50 lap trot dog there was the pure street and the super street was both called the trot dog and they're you know just one was for the pure and one's for the super and that pure street race was man it was destined to get wild it was it was fate put really good drivers and really good cars in a very tight spot the 76 and the 02 only asking those two guys yourself personally will be what's determined you can watch those videos time after time and it doesn't always tell you the truth intent is all you could ask them did you intend on wrecking him no did you intend on trying to push him up the track no they just got together or one of them wrecked the other one either way it went for a while and there was some entertainment <clears throat> I didn't like the entertainment because I'm friends with the Dawkins bunch and I hate to see their car get tore up. Um, the O2's never done anything to me, so I can't talk negatively about uh, Foresight. Um, but I'll tell you, um, I'm on Team Dawkins with it. I don't know if they're right or wrong in the situation because I didn't really see. I got the video of it, but as you, you just have to ask them. You know, they've raced really close. If, um, you know, team dawkins 76 baby that's me um in the other in the other division with shannon i like austin and them too but there's not a lot of uh there's not a lot of conflict there because they they race but man as those guys race harder and harder there's going to be conflict i hope that doesn't turn into anything more than what it did you got your points across there um hunter dawkins is going to be a excellent driver he's going to be the more and more he matures the harder and harder he's going to be to beat because he is not at the most mature level of his racing it's his first year and he is letting the clutch out on that 76 car foresight's a good driver too um you got bo gray in that class a good driver i know i'm missing people but they're the classes run together there and there's a lot of great potential in that class um the 112 and the 
50 car got together didn't get to see it it was on the other end of the track but both those guys seemed cordial about it maybe the 50 car was spinning and the 112 ran over and something like that happened but let me tell you there's some hot rods in that pure street class and i think a lot of those drivers could compete with anybody whether it was super or pure put in the same equipment or in the same rule package they could compete with them hunter's going to be a great driver jeremy is a great driver uh, Bo Gray's a good driver. I know for a fact there's one person that everybody's going to say you're fanboying about because he's my friend, but Carter Murray, guys, for his first time in a big car this year, yeah, I know he drove the, the, limited, the limited modified, but I wouldn't count that as them giving their best effort towards racing. <clears throat> but this is a pretty good effort they're putting forth, and they're getting to know what's going on with those uh, big body cars and Carter Murray is a wheel man. He is a good driver. He's very, very mature for his age and his time he's been in the car, just like Hunter Dawkins. Those two guys stay in the same class for a long time. They will both be running up front and be very, very hard to beat. Great drivers. Going into the next race, which was our race, once again, the man has been determined and, and going back to before all the stuff when me and brock and, and adam and all we was talking brock said this year he wanted to compete or he didn't want to race and he's done a great job working on his car and getting up front nobody can take that away from him he's doing what i think he was doing the best he could with the material he had and now he's doing the best he can with the material that he's got he runs a much smoother line now um, and he's got the car turning really well, and the car is fast. He's got a lot of straightaway speed, and it's all coming from the momentum that he's getting off the corner with. He's running great. Um, if I'm not mistaken, he passed the 38 car Saturday night. That's an accomplishment in its own to pass him, to pass the Johnston RV Center machine number 38 is an accomplishment. And I don't, <clears throat> to, to not be in the position that we was in before, I'm not going to discount the talent that Adam has. And for, for Brock to set him up and pass him, phenomenal. Hard to pass. Um, if they don't want you to pass them, Adam, and, and my dad's hard to pass. If they don't want you to pass them, they're really hard to pass. They know where to kill the momentum for your car. They know where to get in the way and know where to, you know, if they don't want you to pass them, they know where to stop you from passing them at. And I know for a fact, Adam did not want Brock to pass him and he ran up there and he did it anyways. 27 car, Brandon Burchett putting in wrench time. I, I'm not a fan of Brandon Burchett. I'll put that out there right here. I don't like how the night that me and Adam got into it, no matter what happened, he was on Adam's side and take into account running over there towards my trailer and stuff i don't like that 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 doesn't make me a fan um not anything we can't talk about and overcome but i didn't like it because if you really want to find me you know where i'm at but letting all that go cat's got a car cat's got a really good car right now and and i i don't know if he's working on it himself or who's working on it i can't claim one way or the other who's doing what to his car but he went he was slower and he worked on his car and got faster this week, very fast. Maybe it was the two tires. Maybe it wasn't the two tires. I don't know what it was. Looked like he had a lot of straightaway speed. He's doing something right. The 25 car showing that with him in good material, he is going to be hard to beat as well. For me and my dad, we have absolutely wore out our stuff. So waiting on parts for my car to get it back. I've been throwing motors, different motors, different... Uh, uh, cam shafts and stuff in mind trying to duplicate the cam that I had and it the one that broke and so I got another one ordered and it's coming but don't don't look like we're going to be able to compete with everybody at the top of their game my car my car I don't I don't believe that what I've got is fast enough right now down the straightaway to make up for my inability to drive through the corners and that's just me being honest what I will say is all of those guys have came to a peak. They've came to a peak. Brock's at a peak. He's doing really well. Hope that he can keep that up there. And him, 
um, not wearing out his equipment and practice and stuff. He's running it. He's he's figuring it out for the day and then parking it and and getting ready for race time. Um, 25, 27, all look good. Adam's still fast, guys. You can't you can't take away from the fact that Adam's still that I, just because he's not winning don't mean he's not fast. He's fast. And then um, Dad dropped a valve Saturday night. Is why he fell out of the race. Um, I believe we can come back and be competitive. The stuff I was saying at the beginning of the video was all that was all false narrative. That was made up stories. I will probably be never racing a late model in my life because I'm not ate up with it enough to do that. Um, but yes, there is some really fast cars in our class and some drivers that are developing coming a long way and they're doing a really good job. Doesn't mean I'm going to talk to you Saturday, so don't walk up to me and talk to me because I'm not trying to be your friend. Um, that's just me. Not, I want the drama. I don't want to be around the drama. Um, and then you move on I'm going to skip everything else. I'm just going to go straight to the Super Street. I don't know if anything else happened. I don't really care. I think maybe the open wheel raced or something. But uh, that's a snooze fest as it is every week. And uh, <clears throat> what I'm going to go with and say the Super Street race, man, fast cars. Very fast cars. I like that class. I wish the classes were combined together, but I do like that class when there's competition like there was. Just Seven got DQ'd. I'm going to say it was for a engine and uh, engine part. Uh, if they want you to know, they'll tell you. Um, but I don't, I don't even 100% know myself. I just know what they was looking in was the inspection plug, and it went through all the other tech. So I don't think it was anything that was as major as you would think it. Maybe some numbers don't line up with some numbers that they should. If they want you to know, they can tell you about that. It's not my... Uh, it's not my horse to to tell you how to saddle. I'll tell you this: if that if Justice Evans would have showed up at that racetrack, I think with multiple different cars, he would have ran up front. Ultimately, though, he got disqualified. Austin Odom won the race. I think it would have been a better race between Austin and Justice if. Austin hadn't uh, got a bad shake at the beginning. I think he got spun out. Um, there was some drama uh, with that, but I'm not even going to talk about it because what I believe um, was just um, talk, talk. You know, somebody's talking, somebody's upset, and, and then things happen, but not anything to worry about. I think this, the, uh, the 40 car, the 44 car, the 28 car came over with, a, with his new car and was running – I mean, he was running good. I will say I think he picked up a vibration is what he said because I heard him tell multiple people, so I don't think he cares for people to know that. Uh, Shannon Dawkins' uh, new car he brought out picked up a vibration, and he wanted to figure out what it was before he created damage, went home and got his other car, and was running on old tires. Really fast car. You couldn't count Shannon out. I picked Shannon to win the race. I thought that his this year's experience – I thought he was showing up with the uh, with the guns to win the race, and I think he um, maybe if he had had that car earlier and could have you know tweaked on it earlier in that first and second practice, he probably would have been even tougher to beat. Um, I think with the shake, he wound up running third. If um, Austin, Zach Smith, maybe, and then Shannon really didn't pay attention to the lineup. I just there was some on track. Uh, some on track feuding that bled over into the pits with that just a little bit not a lot of drama there one thing i did miss with the open wheel foots kaiser's grandson made his debut in the 14 car and then a bad early incident i'll say one thing to him stay in it don't let that one incident discourage you from from uh reaching your full potential because somebody spins out or something happens and you run into them that's just going to happen Especially, I think it more or less magnetizes to the new people, and that's because we're not watching past the hood pins when we're that young into the sport, worried about just our car, not anything else. But listen to your grandpa; he's an excellent. Uh, he's he's got a, he's a great setup man. He does a lot of work to be fast week in and week out. So if you're with him, you're going to be good. And uh, when Sean gives you advice, Sean's been there. 
you know, you're going to get out of the car and they're going to want to talk about it. If you don't want to talk about it at that time, just say, you know, instead of getting all into your head and all that stuff, just say, hey, listen, give me a few minutes. Let me cool off. Let me process what I did. And then, you know, let me know it. You may be somebody that don't get hot headed as you're in the car and mistakes happen. You may not be that way. But I would, my first bit of advice would be don't run off the people trying to give you advice by being a smart aleck straight out of the car while you're hot and frustrated. Say, hey, look, I'm a little frustrated. I'm a little bit mad. Give me a few minutes. Let me cool off. I'll come to you. Um, and because I, I actually, when I was younger in the sport, when people would try to come to me and give me advice right out of the car, they're not taking into account your heart rate's at 130, your mind's running 100 mile an hour, you're still thinking about where you messed up on lap three, and they're trying to tell you about something on lap 17. Just tell them, hey, look, let me process it, and then let's talk about it. Don't run off, you know, good help and advice, which you're not going to do that with your grandpa and them, but, but like, or Sean, but certain people coming and trying to give you advice you know and listen to all of it but don't take all of it don't take all of it as it's good positive advice listen to your grandpa listen to sean or whoever they tell you to listen to because they got your best interest in in their heart um i was looking forward to seeing that i really wanted to get some film of you making your first laps in the race but uh good luck with your career i think reed i think reed's his name i may be wrong um, but glad to see that family bringing in somebody else into the sport. And um, from there, you went to the Road Warrior where Billy Dill whacked him over the head, started started in a good spot. Kenny Hogan, I think, started um, kind of blocked in by a couple of slower cars, and then but they just they cut out. Billy Billy cut out and just wore them out. Um, really good racing in that at you know throughout the year. Didn't really pay attention to it on Saturday night. And, you know, I would say this week for us was drama free. We were just trying to find speed in the gray car and um, trying to just do what my dad likes to do and go to the racetrack and race. Um, I probably would have already hung it up for the year if it wasn't for him, but he put a lot of work in and got the car back prepared uh, to be there. So I'm gonna go give those, all those opportunities I can to spend time with my dad and try to not let it be uh, drama filled festivities and just have a good time with my dad and and appreciate the time that i have with him and i cannot wait for it to be hunting season there's a lot less drama in our hunting schedule than there is in our racing schedule um but you know somebody asked me they they saw a post they sent it to me they asked me was i you know mad about it disrespect has to be taken for it to you know you can give disrespect but i have to take what you say as disrespectful and i could care less what people say about um myself it, it really doesn't matter to me what people say but i will say this Surrey speedway has a lot of good loyal people to me and my family and to a lot of y'all appreciate the fans appreciate the fans that you have and appreciate what you have don't worry about what other people have or or, or worry about what other people uh, say about you because what you have reflect in the moment what you have and how blessed you are because if you're able to come and sit in those stands you're blessed because somebody sitting at home don't got the gas money or, or entry fee money and if you're in a race car down there there's somebody sitting in those stands or sitting at home that wishes they could be there and take that into consideration because what I would say is we're all blessed beyond what we probably deserve um, because we live in America, free country, where we can take some old beater junk, take it to a racetrack, race it to its full potential, go home and work on it, spend time with our families, and we get to enjoy the time that we have with our family and with friends. If you if you have friends at that racetrack, if you don't, like myself, I, have I lost friends because of the racetrack? I have, but I've gained friends in the masses that I could call right now and they would help me with anything that I needed. And a lot of y'all do too. So you, you look around and you think you don't got any friends, talk to some of these people at the racetrack. They can, you can find some of the best friends you've ever had and probably some of the most 
weekendable, I'm just going to call them weekend enemies. If you run into them somewhere else, they're probably not your enemy. But on that racetrack at that moment, you're fighting and you're all fighting for a trophy that costs $10 and, and the least amount of money. You probably don't, you probably make more money in a day than you do winning a race at Savory Speedway. So what I would say is consider how blessed you are if you're just able to show up and spend time with your family. I know this was a long video. Um, I thank you guys for watching. I thank you guys for subscribing. If you liked it, hit the thumbs up button. If you don't like it, hit the thumbs down button. Um, anything that you see, somebody came up to me Saturday night and I disrespected them hard off the start because I didn't want to hear what they had to say because somebody, I was talking to somebody else and then this person came up um, and then I did wind up, I, did, I say disrespect them. They might not have took it as disrespect, but I was just going to just nudge off what they were saying and just let them go. But they forced me to listen to what they were saying. And, you know, I appreciate that. Like, no, no, no. You told me that if I wanted to say something that you would be willing to listen. Now, give me that respect and listen to me. So I did that. I turned around and talked to that person. And I didn't, it wasn't that person or that, um, it was the moment I was in and what I was, I didn't want to hear. I didn't want to hear anything. Uh, I get in those moods where I don't want to hear what you got to say. And that's, you know, so thank you for forcing me to listen to what you had to say. And thank you for having an opinion about it because, you know, it's a plain talks, easy understood. I will keep that out of, you know, out of my videos and stuff. And I appreciate that. Um, so y'all, Subscribe to the channel if you haven't. Over um, three quarters of my viewers have subscribed. I say three quarters. I would say it, uh, over a third of my over over a third of my viewers have subscribed. There's still uh, probably two thirds of you that haven't subscribed. Click that subscribe button if you have a if you have an account. If you don't, consider getting an account so you can subscribe to my channel and different channels uh, like uh, Corey. Uh, Guthrie has a channel and Nathan Davis has a channel and uh, Matthew Martin has a channel consider subscribing to those guys channels or listen to their content um, You can the good thing about YouTube is you can subscribe to my channel and Everybody else's you don't have to be for one or for the other. They're all free. They're free for you to watch. They're good entertainment uh, Matthew Martin has a different take on things than I have Corey Guthrie has some some different um not really takes he, he has more of his own race day stuff i have more of an overview of what i thought about the races and and some of my everyday stuff and i'll be putting some stuff on there about my bow hunting and uh, hunting season in general this year and uh kind of what we do with our maybe some of our food plot stuff it'll just depend on what i'm doing those days if i think it's something that's informative or fun or entertaining i'll put it on here so if you like hunting definitely click uh, the subscribe button because we'll be putting some stuff on there if you like bow hunting uh, Maybe if you want to be in a video if you want to come over and shoot the bow with me We'll have a good time uh, Good thing on my back deck. We can grill and shoot off down into uh, what's going to be my 3d target range down there uh, So after racing season, it won't just be dead. I'll be putting some stuff on there about the bow hunting um, Doing the food plot stuff like that that we'll be doing in the next couple of weeks um I don't edit videos. I go straight to it and, and get to the points or don't or drag them out like I did this one. But what you'll see is I always tell you my honest opinion that I will also tell you to your face if you want me to or if you want to talk. Have a good time. I'm that guy. Um, like I said, thank you guys for subscribing. Thank you for, for liking. You guys have really been uh, helpful on my Facebook page. Um, anything on my Facebook page you guys comment let me know your opinions if there's a lot of cussing and stuff I've said in the past I do cuss but I will not have the premeditated typed out stuff on my page because kids are gonna be kids are gonna be watching it and I'm not gonna be um, influencing them to say you know bad words and stuff like that because they sit there and they're reading this stuff and listening to it as well and we gotta uh, consider that when we're creating the content that we're creating. Um, if you want to see some good racing content, Corey Guthrie's page has some on it, and Matthew Martin's got some pretty good videos. Um, hadn't really dug into some of the other guys' uh, <clears throat> YouTube channels and stuff, but 
hoping to see the Donnie show come back and start putting some takes. Man, I would like to hear what they've had to say over the last little while. And um, as always, support your local RV dealer, whether that be the ones in Coleman, Decatur, you know, Johnston RV Service or Burton Campers. Um, that was a really good troll. That was really good. Um, I love that. To be honest with you, I absolutely love it. It's one of the funniest things uh, I've seen. Um, guys, until next week, there was a lot of excitement. I probably didn't talk about half of what you guys would have wanted me to talk about. I talked about a bunch of rambling uh, stuff, but I appreciate you for watching. And um, subscribe to the channel if you please. Thank you.